a Skype? <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna shut that this down. Uh, America all in love. <laughs> no, that that's uh, that's 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 messenger. That's yeah, messenger. That's, you uh, have mail. Great. When you tell the kids, don't come downstairs because you're because you're recording. Uh-huh. Yeah. They just call you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can it's we a, have brownies? <laughs> it's all good. What? So, Dep- <laughs> Department of Labor took a million, recovered at one point five million dollars in backed wages uh, from contract or for. You know what I like about iSolved? Everything. iSolved is people centric, and in a people centric world, you need a people centric solution. I Solve People Cloud is a comprehensive human capital management solution that helps you employ, enable, and empower your workforce throughout the entire employment lifecycle, from tracking to recruiting to onboarding and compliance, from payroll to benefits to time and labor management. Transform your employee experience for a better today and a better tomorrow with iSolved. For more information, go to iSolvedHCM.com. What's up, people? Ryan Leary here from Work Defined. <laughs> I'm going with it. I'm going with it. As this is the barf. It is Sunday, the 31st of March. It is Easter. Happy for Easter. Some. Yes. For some. For some. Yes, correct. <laughs> for some. <laughs> for some. For some, not so much. But it's, it's okay. Hey, no hate. No hate. Yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody, right? So... <laughs> Happy it's been it's been a week, man. I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff that's happened. Uh, we have a lot of good stuff to talk about today. We had a lot of good conversations this week 100%. as well, which yep. was which was uh, fun. A lot of different conversations. Um, what we were just talking about, which is why we're laughing. But hey, yep. you know, we're here for the news. They're not here for our stories. So let's get to it. What do you got? All right, let me pitch you on uh, a couple things here. Let's start off with Adam Newman. Newman makes uh, a bid. <laughs> That's what I thought of when that I first was, read the article. <laughs> that wasn't um, a sound effect. That was actually. No, that was not a drop. That wasn't a drop. <laughs> um, he makes a bid. He's a former co-founder of WeWork. Yeah. And he was ousted uh, yeah. from WeWork in, in 18. He yeah. kind of had a Jesus complex and all that other stuff. So, anywho, he made, he's made, it's good. They're going through bankruptcy right now. Yeah. And so he is making a bid. Mm-hmm. I think he put a bid, a five hundred million dollar bid, five hundred million could, could go up uh, once they do due diligence and all the other stuff. So why? First of all, it's just crazy to me because in eighteen pre pre pandemic, it was go to the office, shared space, all that stuff made sense. Mm-hmm. Once you went through the pandemic, going back to work or having shared space, I'm not sure. That I mean, again, again, I think you can get the the corporate the corporate lease. So I think you can get not think. I know you can get yeah. space cheaper. So that makes sense because it's just we have an sure. overabundance of, of inventory. So you can get so that part of the model that's going to be good. So if he was if he was paying twenty five dollars a square foot before, he he's going to be paying like seven. But are, can he recruit the companies and the people to that model? That's the thing that I like is is this a good bet, mm-hmm. or is he just crazy and I, trying to get back to the the things that he did before Go ahead. yeah well i I think there's so I think there's a couple things here i think there 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 is a path I think it's gotta look different i I don't see even myself who once had an office at right. at co working right. I don't have the want to actually do it anymore. Right. I think I did it because I felt like it was hip. It's hip, and I'm like, hey, let's go do it. I'll talk to people. I'll grab lunch. Well, I'll, well, work, also, I'll do this. Your, your household, you got a lot of well, – it's it's uh, Grand Central at some points where yeah, there's yeah, a lot of coming and going. But I don't have that feeling anymore. Hmm. I don't want to do it. There's nothing stopping me. I just don't want the, to do it anymore. I don't want to get out and, and go. I'd, right? uh, if I'm leaving the house, I'd, that I sounds want like to do work. something for me. Yeah, yeah. I want to do something for me, not not to go to the office. They're not, so, they're not going to let me podcast my boxers. That's the thing. Yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, if I mean, if I stood up now, we might be in trouble. But see, the thing <laughs> is, is so is that a good bet? That's the thing we need to kind of keep track of over time is, yeah. okay, is that a good bet because of this return to office? 
or RTO? Or is it just he wants to go back to the heyday of when he made a lot of money with this idea, et cetera? So, yeah, right. I, I, th- I think I think what we're going to find out is it's a little of I want to go back and finish what I started. But but I don't know. Whatever. All right. It is what, what it is. Got? What do you got? OK, this one is uh, an investment. Oh, I guess this could be funding, really, um, with Amazon. So Amazon, not sure if you followed this, they put another $2.85 $2. billion into Anthropic. So that raises their total. That. Yeah, it raises their total to about $4 billion, which is a whole lot of money. And so why, why I like this, um, not so much for the investment, all that, all that uh, is, is obvious stuff, I think, at, at, this, at, this, at this juncture. Um, we've recently been talking about degrees. Mm-hmm. And degrees that make sense versus de- degrees that have always made sense, but degrees that once have not made sense that right. are now kind of coming to the forefront. And we use you, I think, as the example with 100%. one of your many of philosophy yeah. or political yeah. science or whatever, whatever, hell you, whatever. Hell you got, yeah. um, where at one point you get that, you're like, what am I going to do with this? So now what's happening is um, in in this announcement and some of the other announcements around this is that philosophy degrees is kind of what I'm coining it. Philosophy degrees are the new STEM degrees. Yeah. Um, so it's humanities. T- yeah. Anything so the, in the humanities. Hey, exactly. So it, the, it teaches the, you critical thought and criticism. So it, well, exactly. It, it, exactly. it teaches you how to think. So. Yes, and that's the top skill right now yeah. is, is, what, is what Anthropic is looking for, uh, which are top thinkers that can solve problems. So yeah. a couple of things with this, and I don't know if it's in this story or another one. Oh, no, it is this one. So let me ask you. <laughs> this is crazy. This is what's going to blow people's mind. It blew my mind. May, it may blow yours. The average me- – now, there's different tiers of talent, right? So right. in in Silicon Valley with Anthropic and some of these other companies that are running that that are that are battling with AI, with AI, tier one, the average median median salary nine hundred twenty five k. That's the that median tracks. salary, right? That it yeah. can include bonuses, that it can include yeah, equity. Yeah, stock, all that the stuff, majority yeah. of tier one is between a million and a half and two million total yeah. package. Most of them are fully guaranteed. Just to sign on, but the allure for all of this is just not salary. So this isn't where That's right. salary is not the driver. So what companies are doing now uh, to win the war for talent, uh, they're all so the the candidates are also negotiating the ability to do their own thing, run their own project, create their right. own product, fully supported by the company, fully funded by the company, yep. and it's their own project and they yep. own it, they run it. And that's part of these employment contracts. And so, what what the what the in, inside of some of these contracts, or at least what's being reported, reported is, yes, that is true. That is happening, and that's how they're funding innovation within the company. But they, they probably first have, have to the complete first, that initial task. Yeah, they the probably company. have the first right of refusal. Exactly. So, like Career Builder years ago used to do a deal every year where they'd. Uh, it was the best idea competition. I can't remember right, his name. Right, right. And they went through the field, right. and it was like a startup competition. Yep. And the f- people that got funded, they spun that spun that out, and they gave them, I don't know, a million or five million, million or whatever right. the bit was, is to go build it. But they had equity in it, and they had the first ride on sure. any future rounds of funding. Yeah. It's just, just smart. I mean, again, yeah. this is just interacting with talent in a different way. You're basically saying, hey, listen, we understand that you've got other interests other than this interest. Right. Do this thing to help us, and we'll help you do this other thing that you care about. Like, yeah. I think you're going to see with Gen, <laughs> Gen Z and Alpha, I just think you're going to see more of that. So, yeah. If you want well, the talent, the talent, you adapt. Pay which, for it. it gets me this uh, story about Crunchbase. Um, by the way, that Newman story, if you want to look up uh, the WeWork stuff, it's on a lot of websites, but I found it on CNBC. So you can go there and Google Google it or search for it there. So this one is not a newish story, but it gets it's it's a really good add on to what you just said, and it's called uh, it's VTO. It's paid VTO volunteer time off. So there's a lot of companies that have been doing this, and I, I found this via um, a job ad for Greenhouse that was on Greenhouse uh, for Crunchbase, and uh, it is one of the benefits listed in the job ad. Is not only your paid time off and all that other stuff, but you they pay you 
to volunteer. Like it doesn't, you, it doesn't take mm-hmm. away from your sick days or from your other days, you know, holidays and whatnot. It doesn't take away from anything else. But if you want to volunteer and go to Habitat for, Habitat for Humanity or whatever the bit is, they'll pay you for that. They'll, I right. mean, you just you get paid, which again, I think with 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 talent, I think this is across all generations. Yeah. If they want, because you used to have to, I uh, will volunteer on the weekends or at night or whatever. But if you can take off, you know, Thursday a month and go do something with a, a charity that you care about, like, like I see that as being very cool and a nice way to retain talent. Yeah. Uh, when I was with Connexa, we did that. So yep. we we would do it. Sometimes they do it as a group. Um, right. Which right, was, right. Eh, you know, whatever. Like, it was fine. Like, it was fun. It was a day out, and you got to do it with your with your group. But I think individually, if you could just take your day off, and, and which they did allow, uh, right. that was more right. meaningful for me. Because did it did was they something... allow it, or was did they pay for it? No, no, was it, it was just, you just took your day. Yeah, you just, yeah, yeah, you just took your day, and yeah. you and you went. Yeah, you, you do it monthly, and but so, you didn't get paid. Did you? Did, uh, um, oh oh yeah, the... yeah, you got paid. Yeah, you, it, okay. it, 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 yeah, it didn't count against you. Um, gotcha. But it was when I did it. What I found the difference for me, anyhow, was when I did it with a group. I felt like okay, it was good. It was a company thing, but it was more it felt a like company. Work. It, well, yeah. I felt, yeah, I was with the people at work. It was more the company. <laughs> I'm, trying had to, the, I'm trying to shed these people. <laughs> <laughs> the company had the banner. It was a promotion, yeah. you know. I see you at you work know. every day, man. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have a cubicle yeah. next to me, dude. I don't want to see you at it. Yeah, at, at the. Yeah, we, we went. We went to we went to a zoo and local zoo, and we we did some work and cleaning up in an area and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But of course, we had the big banner, you know, all that crap. But when you go on your own. Yeah, I just go on my own. If I want to do a food bank or if I just yeah. want to go wherever, like I can do whatever I want. I don't need to tell anybody. I got it approved. I go and it's my own thing. And it just felt like better that. to do it on my own. So yeah, no, I'm yeah. definitely 100% with, with that. All mm-hmm. right. So the Department of Labor on a mission recovered another one and a half million dollars last week. I think we, I forget what the number was last week uh, we were talking about, but this week, I found they um so one and a half oh well let me shut that off. <laughs> a Skype? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna shut that this down. Uh, America <laughs> online. No, that that's uh, that's 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 messenger. That's yeah, messenger. That's, you uh, have mail. Great. When you tell the kids don't come downstairs because you're because you're recording, uh-huh. yeah. they just call you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can it's we all, have brownies? <laughs> it's all good. What? So, the <laughs> Department of Labor took a million, recovered at one point five million dollars in backed wages uh, from contract or for contractors uh, from contractors sorry, on California projects. So, thirty five oh, companies shit. were named in this lawsuit. Uh, and they've been ordered to pay back thirty five and a half million dollars in backed wages for construction workers across 2,134 cases, uh, which is the highest amount so far in any industry. So these right. are people that are have taken – these are companies that have taken projects from the state of California. Right. They've gone through. They've done their work. They haven't paid, whether it's overtime or oh, – They haven't um, paid their, their talent. They haven't paid, they their, haven't paid their talent exactly appropriately. And so huh. – or maybe the job – they pulled the Trump on them, right? Oh, the job's done, but it's like, eh, not eh. amazing. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and yeah, so so they got banged on that, and so they're paying Dude, out getting money and back. Half getting money back from people is is uh, very difficult. I mean, the federal government uh, with the IRS, they can get money back because they can do all. They can put liens on anything you own. They can get yeah. garnish your wages. Like sure. they're the best. They're the best debt collector in the world. But I don't. I don't think the state of California has. It'd be really interesting to find out if they have that power. But like getting money back from people, mm-hmm. once it goes, they've already spent it. Like so, now paying yeah. back. I, if they want, unless, if they want more contracts, I'm pretty sure. That's yeah. You got some <laughs> leverage there. I'm yeah. pretty sure they're going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let me pitch you this deal on the end of foreign language education. So the end um, of foreign language end of education. Or, and I've I so. I actually talked to a friend about this last night. She was she was telling me she wants her daughter to take Spanish, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's a waste of time." And she's like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "There's an app for that." 
Like you just turn on Google Translate. You don't have to learn languages. That's that's a horrible idea. You know, just have her learn how to prompt or ask ask questions or you know do other things. But learning a foreign language is dumb. So anyhow, the article is in the Atlantic. So go there and uh, just search for end of foreign language. And for me, it's it's I took eight years of Spanish, so four in high school and four in college. And I know uh, Donde Esta el Baño, where's the bathroom, uh, <laughs> Dos Cervezas, two beers, <laughs> and uh, Hola, and maybe a couple other terms. That's it. Yeah. But I think the, the work-related story here is looking at the low-value task and how different applications are going to take over low-value tasks. We used to value foreign language. Oh, you know Russian or you know Mandarin or whatever. This, You know what? You don't need to learn Mandarin. You just need to be able to download an app that ha- that that you can then talk to and listen to in your own language. So, uh, I think the translation to mission to work is looking at things that you you know we valued at one point, but we don't value it as much because there's an app for it. Right. So, I'm not good at languages. <laughs> <laughs> but I've often I, I have often thought let's let's get the app right let's do it and, and learn and and I think I might I think I might I think your story convinced me to give it a shot not that your story hey, was trying to convince me but hey, you don't just, you don't I have to get do I mean it. the thing is you don't have to learn it like like uh, all the things in the past that where people would you know download things listen to tapes and no. all that stuff you don't have to do any of that anymore no it's just it's a waste when mm-hmm. you're going to Italy. Make sure you have Google Translate. No, and then that, as exactly. people are talking in Italian, it translates it, and you hear it in English. And then you say it in English, right. and it comes out in Italian. Like, yeah. Now, dude. if I'm going to go sit at, sit at a table with leadership from around the world, and I need to know Mandarin, different story. I'm not breaking out Google Translate. I get I it. Know. I know. For me, they've, got, it's they've got wearables for this now. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Where you can, you can hear it, and it plays in your ear. Mm-hmm. And it's like... You hear it in English, or you hear it in whatever you hear, language. You hear it in whatever language, right. right. All right. Dillard. You, you know Dillard's, right? I do. Yeah, I do. Dillard's. So they paid $70,000, not very much money, to a worker who claimed retaliation for reporting race and pregnancy bias, right? So, again, mm. I feel like week after week, I'm kind of I, – I, I, I started a, a, yeah, a yeah. trend for myself here. The PWFA, the Pregnancy Worker Fan, Fanersack, it's actually working. Like it's it's actually working, and the more I read on it, the more I search on it, the more Google serves it up to me, of right. course. Right. But I'm I'm Thanks getting a, yeah. Well, and so now I'm 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 looking at all of these cases that are that are actually going through the PWFA and winning. Well, and winning, here's, and, it, and this here's is the, one. Here's the if you want to be depressed about that, here's here's how to be depressed about that. For every one that reported that, there's a hundred that have not. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> yeah. So, and whenever you do an and, just remember. So it was race based and pregnancy based. It could have been or or. So it could have been race based, or it could have been pregnancy based, but it, or it could have been a combination of both. Yeah, and you're never going to really know. No one's going right. to ever really know. But just remember, whenever whenever you hear and, that's multivariable analysis. Yeah, or multivariable. Yeah. Yeah, so so this this is one of those cases of the workers are assembling, right? And they're treat, they're 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 treat, raising treat their voices people, which they should. Treat treat pregnant women well. Yeah, so so here's the story on this. Um so in, in twenty twenty the employee informed the who's a new store ma- there was a new store manager manager. Mm-hmm. And so in twenty twenty this this employee informed the new store manager uh, about an existing pregnancy that she had. Yeah. And that oh. they have they had uh, pregnancy related accommodations for her, um, cool. which is fine. So the store, so Dillard's actually did accommodate. The manager rescinded those accommodations. Oh, that's horrible! And transferred the employee. Horrible. It, right. So this isn't necessary. Well, it is Dillard's. I'm, you know, it is Dillard's. Yes. It's everywhere. But it's, I mean, you're but, just, but this is a, but, they, but they but they did. Make accommodations. They have yeah. her. Well, they set it's up. actually federally. They have right, to. right, right. So right. let's not give them credit for doing stuff that they. Well, <laughs> no, but it's not. That, no, it's, but I want to like, be clear that they didn't just say no. Like they've had this. It was in. Right. It, it was in. It's the manager. The, ma- the new manager that came in came in and said, "No, this is ridiculous." 
and they got rid of it. Um, so so she, what she I'm made thinking the to myself, but, Dil- but Dillers did ignore her complaints. Ooh, and that's where they they wound up losing the uh, losing yeah. the case. Well, that what it what it screams to me is that's a person that's never had kids. The manager, they've never had kids. They just want the person to go back to work. They, it's, you know, like hey, go back to work. Yeah, you don't need yeah. to feed. You don't need to pump. You don't need to do all that stuff. Whatever you're doing, or you just you know if you're or it's just an untrained manager. Pregnant, yeah, I, yeah, great point. Could have been yeah. something like could have been just let's fix this in training. But the fact that they did their accommodations, good. They didn't follow the accommodations. That's uh, well, I'm, I'm glad they had to pay out. Yeah. All right. Today is World Backup Day, March thirty first. <laughs> Do not be a cautionary tale about data loss. All right. So this is uh, SpiceWorks dot com. Go and take a look at because there's all these horror stories of how about people that lost their data. And uh, again, sometime this week, just stop down for an hour or two and make sure that you have you have everything backed up. And the, the why this is coming up for me is it's a lot of remote work or hybrid work. Bring your own device, bring your own cloud, etc. It's never easy, even if you have it set up on a system where it's doing it itself. How often do you actually go and check to make sure it's backing up? Um, so just sometime this week, do me a favor and just go do that. And uh, that's it. World backup hmm. day. How about World Pizza Day? World Pierogi Day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't need World Backup Day. I need I need a better World Day than that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. World, not interested world in Donut Hole Day. Great. Yeah. Um. So big retail battling it out with bonuses. This is oh. um. I I found this one interesting. So it was funny because the the whole thing was about Target um with their bonuses and you know this and that and blah blah blah, and then it. That wasn't the the interesting part to me. It was what got me to read, but then I got in there and it it seems as though Walmart pays a lot of money. Oh yeah, to their to their managers. I'd be retired. I'd be retired right now. Yeah. So so for so for those so so basically they're so the the the, the battle of bonuses is 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 what mm-hmm. it's called, right? So essentially they're doubling down on the bonuses, which which Smart. let me pull this up because. I, I don't I, – I, I need to read this to you so you can tell me if I'm reading it wrong. Yeah. Okay. Target is doubling bonuses for salaried employees, the company mm-hmm. confirmed. The retailer said it will pay 100% of the employees' eligible bonus – eligible 2023 bonuses. For the prior year, the company paid 50% of eligible right. bonus. So I understand what they're saying. We're going to – they're not doubling the bon- the bonus. Right. They're just giving you your bonus. They're doubling what they actually paid out on the bonus. Right. But well, they're not people, doubling the bonus. It's, it's, uh, it's what I used to say about software. It's not a feature if people don't use the feature. Right, right, right So right. It'll, it's not a benefit if people don't use the benefit. And in this case, it's not a bonus if people don't actually get to hit the bonus and be able yeah. to capitalize on the bonus. I think yeah. some of this is a mixture of it's really hard to find retail talent, especially at the management oh, and executive level yeah. and store level. And, and like a good store manager can drive sales. That yeah, can, well, and, can impact sales. So Yeah, and, like, and, that's, and that's where I'm going with this. So Walmart – so Walmart uh in their in their quest to to not get stuck anymore with not enough people and right. especially at the manager level uh so they've 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 boosted their their bonus incentives of course right because that's what everyone's doing but they've also raised the average the the the, uh, the salaries of everybody the average store manager now earns $128 uh, $128,000 yeah. annually and, plus bonuses. Yeah, plus bonuses, and they also get uh, twenty thousand up to twenty thousand dollars in stock grants oh, in yeah. their package, right? So oh, yeah. with so with that, with all those changes, right, that Walmart has added, the potential for a store manager at Walmart with the twenty thousand dollars in stock grants and the new pay scale. Of at least uh, of an average of one hundred and twenty eight thousand they're the largest Walmart store managers are expected to earn four over four hundred thousand dollars annually easy easy yeah. so 
when I worked at Walmart, Walmart, they uh, as a as a store manager, um, you got a percent of sales. So not right. only did you get a, a a good salary, and back then in the eighties and then early nineties, you got stock. So you could buy; right. it wasn't capped. So you could buy as much Walmart stock as you wanted to, yeah. and and they split back then. Walmart stock split every two years. So like I, I still have a portfolio of Walmart stock that I haven't looked at in years. But the key back then was if you got to a big store and you could get a and you could the bonus was you could get a percentage and it was still a still small percentage like half a percentage. Mm-hmm. But if you're if you're pulling you know five million dollars a, a week through the store. That stuff adds up adds in a big up. way really fast. Um, but I've done the math, and I would have retired at 40 yeah. if I would have stayed, if, which means that, is that basically I would have worked there for, uh, yeah, 20-something 20, 20 years, Yeah, and I'd be done. But, yeah. you know, I, I think they're doing it for all the right reasons because they're, all these guys are all these guys are competing targets. Walmart. Absolutely. They're competing with Amazon. So the you know that's what their their real competition is Amazon and other things like that. So uh, they've got to they've got to get the best talent at the highest level yeah. to make the best sales of the people that come into the store. Smart. Yeah. So as you're walking through Walmart, don't don't laugh at these guys. They're laughing at you. Just uh, yeah. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Hundred percent. All right. What do you got? Congress bans staff use of Microsoft's AI Copilot. So this is at Axios.com. And uh, if you watch the Super Bowl, they did an, uh, an ad. The, the Microsoft did. I think that's where they launched Copilot. And what's interesting about this particular thing is the Office of Cybersecurity has deemed Microsoft Copilot application to be a risk to users due to the threat of leaking house data to non House approved cloud services. So, first of all, this is singling Microsoft and their Copilot out. And the question for for me and for you and, and the audience is: Will corporations follow this model and ban AI Copilots for the same or similar reasons? Meaning, okay, if you're pick a hell Raytheon, you know that's a defense contractor. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to want everything to say in your cloud. So, if you're using Copilot, in this case, Microsoft's Copilot. And that's going. That's that. That data is going into their cloud, going into their uh, large language model, etc. So, I just think it's. I think it's fascinating. Again, the government they might be leading, actually, on this particular particular issue. And this is Congress. So the Congress bans staff use. And the irony is, I didn't. I didn't read in the article that they banned congressmen, women, from it. They just banned the staffers. <laughs> So, so which are the people? I mean, if you've ever been on the Hill, those are the people that do all the work, anyhow. So mm-hmm. it's it's probably pointless to actually ban uh, Congress. But but uh, I'm I'm really interested to see how corporations look at this and see this and say, hey, wait a minute, we haven't really thought about that in terms of where this data goes and right. whether or not there's secrets in that, etc. So anyhow. Uh, the government, this might be a case where the government is actually leading, not following. So we'll see. Hmm. I like the leading and not following. Finally. Yeah, we'll see. All right. I'm going to mispronounce maybe Tarani. You know, Tarani. They do Trani? the tar- <laughs> They do the flavored, like pineapple, hazelnut, yeah. all that wouldn't, stuff. Wouldn't know any of those things. Yeah, yeah you're no. Good. You're not, <laughs> you don't know you don't know the flavored syrups and stuff, no? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they've gone. They're coming up on a century age wise, company wise, uh-huh. without any layoffs at all. And wow. so yeah. That means they have a lot of people that suck. They have well, there. no. <laughs> no, seriously. Surface. That's a for that's a force that's never had a fire. Yeah, that's not a so, good thing. That's horrible. So, so here's 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 the story. So, there's a, a, a long article, and I'll post a link. I think I forget where I got this from. It was at uh, HR Brew, I think it was. They they wrote on it. Um, 
it, it was interesting. And I was like, okay, so, so how, how are they accomplishing this and, and what are they doing? Um, um, so I can't, obviously can't speak to their people and all that stuff. That'll be just, you know, oh, I can. <laughs> of course you can. Um, but Dude. here's, so they, of course they've been faced with, you know, financial issues that every company yeah, yeah. goes, goes through every that. 10 years we go through a recession Got right it. so so how did they how did they get through it and here's what they're saying not rocket science they hire on the curve as opposed to um they they hire on the curve essentially just in time hiring is how i kind of related it so you need to roll you bring it in right but how did they so when they do that they're looking at very specific things when they hire. They just don't hire people because they have good talent. So they've kind of gone the opposite way of a lot of the companies that you and I both know. Hey, that's they're amazing talent. Let's get them in. Let's find a spot for them. So they've they've had a hard and fast rule against that where they hire for what they need, not what they potentially need. And then they hire backwards. To well, see, what do they to do to fix where they where they need fixing? So when they so again, that all that makes sense in an up market. In a down market, you don't need those people. So here's right. So what they do then is that what they do is they they've trained their people the, from top down. They've trained their people to focus on the bottom line with under um, so non financials to so focus on non financials, and so they've been successful at training their people to when they're not selling or markets right. down or not shipping all the product, working on conversion rate, retention rates, customer sat, renewals, things like that is where they put their their effort into and they've been able to save is this their a people. Publicly traded, is this a publicly traded company? I believe so, but I could be I, wrong. It, 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 it can't be. I'll have to look that up for you and get back to you. Yeah, I can't. Um, I, I just can't. I think shareholders... If they knew that, they would they would actually downgrade the stock. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that happens. It's just a horrible use of talent. If uh, you're, I mean, I, I, get the, I get the theory. It's like uh, communism. If you ever read the Communist Manifesto or, or Karl Marx, on paper it's beautiful. In in theory, it's beautiful. When it's in practice, not beautiful at all. And so, like, this is one of those things. Oh, we're never going to fire you. You never fire. Did you need to fire? There's some people like think of all the toxic people that are there. That that you there's no way that you can hire no, 10 this people. Is a, not, pri it's a private company. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a private company. Yeah, because they can't go public. Because if they go public, that Wall Street would basically they'll, they'll break them. But hey, and rightful, in my opinion, rightfully so. You should. That's fine. You, they're, they're keeping they're keeping their people though. They're happy. Was, they're keeping yeah, their they're people. Keep, they're keeping their people, Ryan. They're keeping the. They're also keeping the people that do sexual harassment, the thieves, the people that do all kinds of heinous shit at work. Well, I'm not saying they're not. They're firing keeping those people. No, no. Well, no. I'm not they're talking about not for going, cause. They're not going through layoffs. Right. Well, but there's people in that mix that didn't do things for cause that are still horrible people. Like, like if you study force, right. if yeah. you study any force in the world, prior to contact. There would be fires, lightning strikes, and there mm -hmm. would be fires that just burn the entire place down, right? That's actually good. You don't want a forest that's mm -hmm. never had a fire. I mean, that's that's actually horrible. So uh, we'll agree to disagree. I don't think it's a good thing. I think it's a horrible thing. You want to you want regret you want to lessen the regrettable turnover, but turnover in and of itself is actually good, not bad. In my opinion. No, no, I'm not, no, I'm not arguing that turnover. No, I agree with that. I agree with everything you're saying. I don't think they're saying the opposite because they have turnover, of course. They have volunteer But they don't do turnovers. layoffs. They don't do riffs. They haven't. They haven't had this. What they in a hundred years, haven't they haven't done a riff. Yeah. That means if that, in my opinion, that means they've got a bunch of, not a bunch. They've got s some people in in that mix that made it through. That are still there. That are horrible people. I mean, not yeah, everyone, of course. Well, every company has horrible people. Yeah. So, I mean, the the, the goal in recruiting is to lessen the number of horrible people that you are. Yeah. Are, well, and they're still letting people go. Yeah, but that's for that's for uh, for cause. Yeah. Right. Yeah, performance well, people and that, all that I'm, stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the people that fly under the radar of that stuff. 
I mean, if you're really savvy, you fly under the radar. You don't get fired for cause. It's like it's like getting caught. Mm-hmm. Like I tell my kids this all the time. Like I'm not saying do not not do shit. Yeah, but that that happens. I'm telling them no, do don't, don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't get caught. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, it's, it's a bunch of idiots in jail that got caught. Just don't get caught. Anyhow. Boston University suggests replacing striking grad students with AI in in response to a grad student worker strike. School (laughs) recommends that the staff utilize... That backfired. (laughs) Get out of here. (laughs) This is so genius. The uh, the school (laughs) recommends that the staff utilize generative AIs to give feedback or facilitate discussions on reading or assignments. This is uh, from the Daily Beast. Hell Yeah. Okay, so uh, definitely look this up. So the whole time I'm reading this, and they're talking about, I'm thinking about Allen Iverson and playoff. Just practice. Or, or practice. So I do this bit. Like right? We're talking about practice. We're, we're talking about practice. Practice. Not the game. Not the game. Not work. Practice. But um, I think it's I think it's interesting to think about when employers sees this idea uh, of, is this a good idea? Again, when people strike, can they be replaced? with some t- form of robot, form form of technology, some form of AI, generative yeah. AI, whatever. So that's what got me to think about it. So if you if you want to dig into that story, <laughs> dailybeast.com. <laughs> I love that Practice. story. I love that story. <laughs> well, we're going to strike, all right? Yeah, cool. strike. We, we got AI for that. <laughs> uh-huh. I know a guy. I know a yeah. guy. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So Jake Paul, you know Jake Tyson. Paul, good friends with Jake Paul. You uh, had dinner with him a couple weeks ago. Wait a minute, you're not talking about the internet guy. No, I am. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's usually I'm talking about the guy that's going to box Mike Tyson in July. <laughs> yes, yeah. you are, who'd aren't you? you? Who do you think I was talking about? <laughs> so there's a guy in our industry named Jake Paul. Oh, and you that's had dinner why. with him. <laughs> well, I, I have had dinner with him, um, and his company was bought by a Greenhouse. Yeah, no, no, no. This Sorry. is uh, Jake Paul, the boxer, the internet dude, douche, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, he's been all over the UFC for not paying their people. Yeah. And he's, you know, that's okay, maybe the one commendable thing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> so check this out. The UFC was ordered to pay the fighters $335 million for allegedly suppressing their pay. So wow, with all that, yes, with all this crap Jake Paul has been doing and all it, it, I mean, now the, the lawsuit was filed a very long time ago. Right. Very, very just long had time to ago. Make its way. It had to make it. Yeah, it had to make its way. Let me see if I can see when this is. I forget when it was filed, but it was filed a long, long time ago, and it had to make its way through. But with all the light and all the publicity that Jake Paul has given it, it's kind of. Oh, it started in 2014, 2015. Decade ish. Um, yeah. So that money is going to be shared across roughly 1,200 current and former fighters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it won't be a huge payday, but the fact that they're getting their money back and and going forward, they're going. They're, the UFC has been put on notice. They've been, so, yeah, exactly. Well, and it's for it's for fixing hmm. wages, price fixing, and wage right. fixing. Right. right. So this it, this sets the guardrails on competition, et cetera. So tie it back in the work. Last last September. A federal grand jury in Vegas returned an indictment against a healthcare staffing executive for allegedly conspiring to fix nurses' wages. Oh, so interesting. which Collusion. obviously, yeah, and violated DOJ's antitrust laws, right, et cetera, right, right, right. et cetera. Uh, anyway, they had to pay. He had, well, I guess they, the exec who yeah. oversaw recruitment, hiring, retention, staffing, uh, yeah, three that... home. It was across three home health agencies. They had to. They had to repay yeah. ten million dollars. It's a big number. Yeah, it's a big number. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, I hope he gets his ass beat by Tyson in July. Yeah. If so, it's a real like, fight, he if absolutely it's a real fight, will. And it, he's not wearing like a padded helmet or some some no, stupid shit. No, I hope no. Tyson. But I, I always I, go. I, I always go back to it. Just takes one one lucky shot to catch him off guard, and Tyson goes down. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. 
I like Ty- Tyson has a has a new brand of edibles. It's called Dice Tyson Bites, oh. and they're in the form of <laughs> I swear to God, and they're in the form of 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 Evander Holyfield's ear. No, really, I, really, I swear to God, I swear to God. So, so if you're in edibles, hilarious. get you some Tyson Bites. And uh, <laughs> I love Tyson. I don't give a shit whatever people uh, say or whatever. If you if you guys haven't his like, wheels watched off. his, yeah, like go look at some of the interviews he's given. Like he is wheels off in a lot of spots, but he actually has like there was one, and I'll have to I have to send it to you. Maybe I'll find it and post a link. It's on Instagram. It's probably everywhere. Where he's talking to a guy. I forget who it was. Oh, it was uh, Shatner, William Shatner. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, I said no. That's yeah, good. yeah, and he was talking about how he doesn't like that guy. Not Shatner. What? He doesn't like the fighter. He said, "Do you still get? Do you get nervous? This and that. Around, you know, when you go to fight." And he says, "I cry before fights." That's right. Because he doesn't like that person. That person hurts people, and he has to transform into this person oh, to yeah. get into the ring. And it's like there's like, there's there's probably a half a dozen or so of these interviews that I've watched. They're small snippets of the interview. But it's like, man, this this guy is deep. Like he's he's oh, had yeah, a no. life that we just don't. Oh, ever, he's had fifteen lives. Never have no. experienced. No, no, no. The closest would be Lawrence Taylor, uh, being dominant in a sport, like redefining a position, mm-hmm. and being wheels off. Yeah. So the fact that both of them are in New York at the same time, and they and they got together a lot. God only knows how fucking crazy that was. But if you haven't watched, Mike Tyson did this is probably five years ago. He did a one man show. And it was kind of a, a comedy mm-hmm. bit, but he would tell his stories of his life. Yeah. And he would t- talk about, you know, all the cocaine he was doing, all this crazy shit. Like, yeah. He's just an interesting character. Life. Like, yeah. We might not have those types of characters going forward because it's so transparent. It, yeah. They, everybody has a camera. So uh, we should probably revel in the fact that they did live. And again, did he do, did he do some bad shit along the way? Yeah, of course. Everybody I, has. I, uh, yeah, if anybody if anybody's without sin, yeah, call me because I'd yeah. love to talk to you. <laughs> so, Stability AI CEO quits via Slack. <laughs> okay. So, Tell me when more. I first read it, and this guy's wheels off anyhow. He's been at a, a couple different places, and he's just wheels off. And so he wants to go do another AI gig because he doesn't believe in the way that they're doing AI, except mm-hmm. for this on TechCrunch. So you can go and kind of see his – he wants to – he's the he thinks this centralized AI is a bad idea. And so more centralized AI, he wants to decentralize AI. Well, anyhow, all that aside, like the, those things are above my pay grade. Sh- quitting over Slack. Just, just stop, right, stop there. Like, it's like getting breaking up with somebody, buddy, over text. Like at least have the, you know, at least have the respect. That's how I would probably phrase it. I would say it differently if we were at a bar, but at least have the 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 respect to have a town meeting, you know, town hall, have a Zoom mm-hmm. call. Like just let people know, hey, this is a hard decision for me. This is why I hate leaving the team, but you know can't reconcile this with the new owners etc and this is why i'm and this is what i'm gonna go on to do y'all have a good time be good etc i'm out but slack message just seems like it just seems to me it seems shitty so what do you what do you think so if you it's, it's kind of like you, this is the ceo this isn't you know this is bobby uh, uh, that works the call yeah. center desk like you expect that shit to happen yeah but this it's is the kinda... ceo Kind of like people walking into a Wendy's or a McDonald's to their boss and, you know, <laughs> singing a song to quit or bringing in a, you know, a, a band with them. A boombox? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's childish. It's high school. Yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Yo. Get on. All right. Acquisition news. Culture oh, yeah. Amp, right? So Culture Amp is set to acquire a people analytics company that is called Orgnostic. Did uh, we talk about that last week? We did? Yeah. Did we? <laughs> Man, I thought I had some breaking Dude, news. Seriously. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that. Did last I week. talk about that or you talked about that? Well, you and I are both the same. So, yeah. uh, yes. Well, but if yeah. you brought it up, that just means I didn't listen. Why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we do this? What's interesting about Orgnostic from a culture and perspective? 
Let's not worry because we did talk about it last week. However, so, that's not the re- that it might not have been that last week. Let me talk. That, yeah, it was. It was last week. But that's not the interesting thing. Now that you've looked at it, yeah, and you've read about it, what do you think yeah. that's interesting about it? Let's let's just keep it. So what I what I what I don't like what I historically have not liked about any of these companies that were running through data, large data sets and providing uh-huh. analytics or metrics to people and serving up, you know, static dashboards and things like this. What I never liked about that is it never had the ability to say, Mr. Leader, Mrs. Leader, here's what you can do. Right, right, right. Here's what action. you need to do, right? Here are the recommendations. Here are some It's just a dashboard. Items. A lot of that stuff just dashboards it's, and dashboards don't tell you shit. Yeah, it's just a dashboard. And and the other thing is that it doesn't help with I'm not sure that this will, but it it, it also gets you so far away from real to real time, what's happening yeah. on your floor in real time that it just almost seems counterintuitive to run yourself a dashboard. Now, I get that's all we have. Right. Got it. But now we have more, and I think this is this is what's interesting to me because now this is going to take a tool that has uh, or a solution that has a lot of legs and makes it better and more actionable for for their clients. Right. So this is what I said last week about it: is our agnostic is an a it's newer technology and it's multi-source, so it's a listening tool, right. whereas. Culture app, pulse surveys, surveys, they're, they're more on that side of things. And they're going trying to fix the world of uh, engagement and getting a sense of who's engaged or who's not engaged, flight risk, et cetera. Like that culture app makes sense mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons. What, what they bought in Orgnostic, in my, in my opinion, is that a multi-source analysis uh, platform to bring into what they already have. But you're right, on any of these things, until it can predict, so not only the action layer of, right. okay, here's what's happening now, it's also, okay, right around the corner, here is what's going to happen. So it's, right. I, I think it's a great acquisition. I think it's it's smart of culture now to buy new technology, but also, yeah. I mean, they could have built it, but why build it uh, when you can there. go and buy brand new technology? Yeah. So good, good call. Yeah, it's already there. You should listen to our shows, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a. Big I got one acquisition right there. I go, no, no, it's actually. <laughs> here's here's what in the, in the one last week it says. You don't have it to make me feel to. better. I I'm do. trying to. It says it. It says it plans to, and I went with it as pl- plans to as is because why would you ever announce it if you're not going to do it? So so and you read it as is, so that's fine. All right, so getting hired transitions to career circle. Getting hired equals uh, the company called Getting Hired. I know it's uh, hard to track some of this. Is uh, basically underrepresented data uh, talent. So think veterans, think the LGBT community, mm-hmm. think whatever your definition of underrepresented. That's what that's what they were there for. Getting hired. Career Circle is also that. And so what this is is, but Career Circle is owned by the Allegis Group, which is a uh, you know roughly a uh, I think a fifteen billion dollar mm-hmm. RPO and staffing company. So I think it's you know uh, this is like minded people and buying like minded kind of folks that they're trying to help. So I think this is a, a solid acquisition. Terms are not disclosed. It's it's always kind of a bit, but but Allegis it's going to help all the Allegis customers. So if you're an Allegis customer customer, you love this deal because it brings some talent pools together of underrepresented people to the bear for you first and then it's probably to other people after that but right good call can't beat it all right so you want, you want to talk about organosic a culture app acquired a company <laughs> <laughs> set to acquire um <laughs> yeah that was uh you gotta pay more much better attention anyhow <laughs> back to the issue at hand do you have research are you or do you have more acquisitions? Yeah, no, I've got. I'm going to go through a research piece here. So okay, good, good, good. So we're on the R's, folks. Yeah, you're paying attention at home. The B, and the A, and now we're oh, wait. On you're the going R's. in order. I'm just flip flopping. I always go in order. I right. always go in order. Um, all right. So you hire me because I'm a great worker. <laughs> Post hire, 
I disclose that I have a disability. Okay. And then the job role changes. The job description changes. What happens from there? I call do a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. I, I know this is what it, I mean. Yeah. My best well, advice at this point. Yeah. Employment lawyer. This is why well, you have it. them. This is why they're there. That's it. Well, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. So employee employee was hired, disclosed a disability yeah, yeah. later, the, yeah, the, yeah. the job role change, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that is good. They, they did not refuse to make accommodations. They went through the interactive uh, process of discussing accommodations. They did everything they needed to do. They documented everything, so on and so forth. The legal team felt that it wasn't enough. Right. So, it, which means it wasn't enough. Which if means it probably that, wasn't mean, enough. Right. Percent. But so they they continued to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, anyhow, PPD, <clears throat> which is um, you know, whatever company, whatever. Uh, PPD, PPT, PPD. Sorry, development. They lost the judgment for twenty four million dollars. Whoa! So the case went to trial. This is a fast one. The case went to trial right. in twenty three, and the jury found. The the verdict uh, for the for her name was Menninger, uh, awarding her twenty four million dollars. Here here's the here's how the payout breaks down because it seemed like a lot of money. Like right. are they like that's a lot of money for something that the that the company wasn't really fully at fault with for. Yeah, right. I they mean, hired the person disclose. based on skill. Then yeah. it was dis- – and it was um, it was disclosed. Now we're talking – when I say it was mental health and, health and it was anxiety, I'm sure there were some other things, but this is what the what they were talking about. Yeah. Anyway, $1.56 million in back pay, yeah. $5.465 million in front pay, $5 million for past emotional distress, $2 million for future emotional distress, and $10 million in punitive damages. So – what they were saying here is that yeah, – that's that a reach ju- for me. I'd appeal. Right. So the – so and, and they have, and this is where it's at now. Yeah. It's an appeal, and I think they're going to win this. Um, they, they, that That's just a jury punishing an employer uh, just because it's easy yes, to punish them. It's, and that was the point here. I think this is a bit over a bit over the top. Now, where in, – and you guys can click through all – you know, we'll have the link down there for you. Um but what was interesting here is that the employer didn't change the job description to affect the employee. Her right. role did, her her role required her to present at sales meetings, to talk yeah. with people, to present in person, and they offer her the ability to pre-record presentations. Right. Uh, but she didn't. They the the employee did not want to take questions live. She wanted them emailed to her. Like at what point? Is this now impeding the ability of the employer to actually close business because yeah. you can't answer real time questions? You have to have them emailed. There's a 48 hour delay. It's a recorded video. The, the, this There's got to be a the, limit. Again, as a capitalist, this is real simple. You're there to help the business make money. It, yeah. Period. That's your value. This is a nonprofit. If it was a nonprofit, maybe I would, I'd feel differently. Or if it was a government job, I might right. feel differently. But this is a corporation. Corporations, right. you only exist to make the company money or you cease to be relevant. So, right. I mean, A, that's just a lot of money. The emotional duress, all that yeah, shit. Yeah, shit. That, like, I, that's what I'm – automatically yeah. don't believe any of that stuff. However, if if there's something that the company did and it, that's absolutely wrong, yeah, they should mm-hmm. pay. Like I don't, I don't believe in companies getting all scot-free. I also don't agree in just penalizing companies because you don't agree with them. So, no. Yeah. All right, the State of Workforce Skills Gap 2024 report. Skills gaps aren't widening, they're worsening. This is at springboard.com. They did a, a thousand respondents. I always like looking at the uh, the methodology of, that, of these reports to kind of see how they get, get baked. Mm-hmm. So it validates a whole lot of things that we already kind of know about skills. But if you need to be make a business case for tech or for hires or whatever, 70 here's four data points 70 percent of leaders say there's a skills gap 
skills gaps are getting worse. Data analysis skills are 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 sets uh, are high in demand. Companies are severely lacking in strategic strategic thinking skills. So the report itself really cool. If you're into skills gaps, like again, skills gaps have always been around. So like if you think this is something new, like oh my god, this is 2024 skills gap. We've always had skills gaps. So had skills gaps when we were, you know, when 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 in the 1880s there were skills gaps. So there was things that were happening that we we had certain skills, and then all of a sudden a new technology or otherwise change happened, and we didn't have skills for that. This isn't new, but if you, I, I really what I care about is if you're trying to make a case for, as a practitioner, you're trying to make a case for hire. Or you're trying to make a case for technology to help you hire. They, these reports are uh, they're super useful to pull data from, and then say, okay, here's why this purchase is important. It'll, it'll help us narrow, never erase, narrow the skills gap. So mm. springboard.com. Okay. So I've got one more piece on uh, uh, our, for, for the, research. The research. Okay. For research. What do you got? So EY's uh, workplace report is uh-huh. out. Um, and I want to get your thoughts on, on this. So are employers doing enough to communicate their interest in supporting LGBTQ plus workers? Hmm. Are they doing enough? Well, it depends on who you talk to. So, again, if you talk to executives or comms, uh, internally, they're going to say yes. Or mm-hmm. maybe they'd say something politically correct, like you can always do more. If you talk to the audience or the uh, underrepresented groups, it's it's, it's night and day. There, there, there's so much more to lo- to learn, and there's so many different ways to communicate. And again, I think some of that comes down to being genuine and authentic, mm-hmm. you know, and actually caring about those group, the, those different groups of people. Uh, so, no, I don't think you we'd ever get to a point where those the the audience would say, "Check, we made it." I think because the more yeah, we sure. peel that onion, the more we're going to find out of of other things that we didn't know, and then we'll have to create communication strategies around those things. So yeah, yeah, it's to me, I don't think you'll ever get there. But it's it's worth it's a journey worth taking. I just don't think you'll reach that you'll ever reach the destination. Yeah, I I agree. No, I just want to get your take on that. So you can find that over at EY. They've got it listed there. Probably anywhere you Google it, you'll find it there as well. So similar but different, 2024 Women's Workplace Experience Report. This was put on by the Muse, muse.com. Uh, it was conducted in February. Again, again, 1,000 respondents. And uh, one of the stats, okay, so here I'll give you three stats. More than two-thirds of respondents, 67%. Uh, let's see. Let me read it so I get it right. Go and play the Jeopardy theme. Do, do, do. Da, da, da. <laughs> All right. One of two thirds of respondents think that women in their industry have a hard time getting promoted. It's a big number. Yeah. Eighty-seven percent of respondents do not believe men and women receive the same reaction from managers when negotiating a salary increase. Yeah. I want to. I want to dig into that one in a second. Approximately fifty percent of female employees. Uh, of female employees are unsure if they're being compensated equally to their mer- uh, male counterparts. So that's fifty percent. The, the tough part about that one is that's a transparency thing. That's a that's a compensation right. transparency thing. But going back to the middle one, eighty-seven percent of respondents don't believe that men and women receive the same. What I want to know about that in the future is: was that female to female? Was it female to male? Was it in person? Was it Zoom? Like how did how did that negotiation happen? Mm-hmm. Like what were some of the pieces of that? It sucks no matter what. If eighty seven percent don't yeah. don't if they, if eighty seven percent of of a population feels that something's that's that's it's reality. Perception it's is happening. reality at that point. Right. And so it sucks. It was something we need to fix, but I want to know more about the dynamics that kind of led to that outcome. So it's a it's a great study. And again, if, if you're really into this type of stuff, the muse dot com and this is their uh, 2024 Women's Workplace Experience Report. Yeah, I think I, I think so. On on and when I when I read through that one, the that's the that's the key point that kind of 
stuck out to me, out to me was the negotiation uh, piece there. And what the question that came to my mind, and I'd be curious really to get to get to you know to learn more about this right. is 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 it is it hard on the negotiation because the male if it's a male boss is it intimidating is right. the stature of that person intimidating right that the man's behind the desk and and the female is there trying to negotiate um i'm curious if really what's driving that um on top of yeah, what that's you're what, saying i want to, virtual I want to know that dynamic that. yeah because because this could be a completely different bit if it's mm -hmm. women negotiating with women right right so or or basically men and women let's say the uh, in this case the female is the leader and men are negotiating mm -hmm. negotiating a salary increase and women are negotiating and they're being punished or they think that the men men again that's kind of also a transparency issue as well yeah uh, i think yeah. a lot of this stuff you shine light on a lot of this stuff it gets fixed yeah uh, no absolutely so, Take a look at it. That's a great report. Give you some good data in case you're interested in that stuff. I got one more on the R. Yeah. You ready? Good. The state of misconduct at work in 2023. So FAMA.io, uh, they did a re research report for last year. So look back at all of 2023. And uh, FAMA is a supporter of Work to Find, uh, but I actually found this on my own. So this isn't anything that they sent to me. I found it and then dug into it. And and I'm fascinated with the intersection of misconduct and candidates because it really delved into the the things that happen from a misconduct perspective in the recruiting process. And like harassment, sexual sexual misconduct, mm -hmm. tolerance, all kinds of ages of racism, racism, all the isms all thrown in there. And uh, one of the stats is one in 10 candidates had misconduct issues. And again, mm. that's just crazy to me. You're trying to recruit talent, and then, and then this stuff creeps up. So, uh, I mean, it, it had great other great statistics. Go and take a look at the report, FAMA.io, Misconduct at Work 2023. I've got Are some you ready, you ready for the things. F? Yeah, Good. I've got some money things to to talk about here. Cha -ching. Yeah. So, all right. So I'm gonna I'll kick this one off. Mm -hmm. Um. So I've got I, I know you got a bunch. So I, we'll cycle through these. Yeah. Sure. To to get them through. But HR Tech in the month of February, if you haven't already looked into. Raised 400 – well, out of these specific subset of, of companies, Randy's raised $467 million in February. Half a billion. Half a billion dollars. I, I feel like that's a, that's a good number. Well, do the math. I mean just play that out, right? So that's $6 billion a year. Yeah. So $6 billion went into work tech, and that's probably not using the entire category of work tech. So that's probably a uh, no. that's probably a that's probably a, a lar much larger number than six billion. Yeah. So, but just in, in February, and it's and it's hard to raise money right now. Like yeah. it's almost impossible to raise money right now. So the fact that you know five hundred billion or five hundred million was raised in February is insane. I mean, if this is two thousand eighteen, uh, that's probably a low number for me. But mm -hmm. it is in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, no, exactly. So, so let me go through some of these companies. One company got the the lion's share here. Rain, Rain. They right. took three hundred million dollars of debt yeah, financing. It's a big number. Yeah, it's a big number, right? So, so Rain, which is similar to a lot of the companies that we know, sounds like named... a stripper name. <laughs> Doesn't it? it? It it could, yeah, it does you know actually. Like, yeah, yeah. Rain, Rain, next on stage. And, and that's funny because it's Rain and money. That's what they do. Uh, <laughs> Rain enables employees to ex to access to access their earned wages instantly, yeah, yeah. right? By improving, re you know, obviously that's... improving retention, yada yada yada. All the stuff we know, right? Like daily pay of the world that do this uh, right. 300 million uh that's followed up by in intensi uh 64 million uh which is real-time video analysis mm. uh, so it's but it not people to right. to analyze environments so oh, sure. to empower to to analyze the environment the health and safety awareness and oh that's cool 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all that stuff. And there's a bunch. Scribe is in here. Bright Plan, Upwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so Upwards is a, a care company. Um, so there's another one in here that um, Hello Hi People Force. Uh, we made it in this one. Um, so there, there's a, lot a bunch of them we covered on the barf. Yeah, in- interview I A. <laughs> not AI, yep. IA. Um which is, which is yeah. So they they got the lowest end of the stick here. They've got uh, 1.2 out of that. I guarantee you they did that 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 number they didn't capture everything. Cuz if 300 million went to one part play and it's 440 uh, otherwise, they didn't capture everything. I mean, in the sense of there was other money, they just didn't capture all the categories. Right. In my opinion. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right. All right so, you've got a bunch, so I know we're well, we'll cycle through. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll stay with the um, the theme, ZayZoom, which, uh, which lends money uh, for fee for, to, for employees. This is a kind of an earned, uh, earned mm-hmm. wage access play. And I think what we're learning with all of the funding that happens in that space is that's table stakes. That Gen Z and uh, Alpha and basically all generations now think once you work something, you deserve to have that money. That float that employers used to count on uh, of of basically we're going to hold your money until payroll, which is you know two weeks later, or a month, or a week later, or whatever. The floats that that float is no longer there, and uh, I like that because it, it's it float if you think about it. Float is a way for uh, finance the business, and so it's it's kind of your employer financing your thing. Your employees are financing you doing business, not the other way around. And right. so I like earned wax, earned uh, wage access plays. Mm-hmm. So I think it's basically if you if you don't play that game, you're not going to get the best talent. You're not going to be able to keep the best talent. So Zayzoon, Zay Z A Y Z O O N. Raised thirty four point five million. Okay. Good. Yeah, glow. All right. So, I, I, do you have any more? Or you want me to run through these? No, others? run through because I right. I put all my fourteen in the one bucket <laughs> as you should. Planetier, that's spelled P A P A L A N T I R. We talked about them too. Me, they raised Metaview. Uh, so these are alums, ex Uber and Planetier alums. The company's called Metaview. Which is uh, uh, it's an AI and hiring play. They raised seven million, and uh, what what was interesting when I read this, and I got this on on uh, TechFundingNews.com. So if you want to look that, is is the one of the statements in that in the press release is it saved per the company it saves teams at least twenty hours per hire. And when I read that, I thought it said twenty hours a week. I knew my brain. I thought, well, you know, here's a technology that's going to streamline shit, and it's going to save you 20 hours a week. I'm down. I, I'm down with that. But if you're carrying 30 wrecks and it's helping you 20 hours per wreck, I got to know how many hours you're putting in every wreck to see if that's actually really super helpful. I mean, 20 hours is 20 hours. I got that, but uh, I'm not sure that's. A, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I'd have led with that. Is I guess what I'm what I'm struggling with, unless it was a, mo- a more significant number. So there's that, but good good for them. Glad they raised money. It's hard to raise money right now. Seven million to MetaView. All right, next one, Cloverleaf. Which Ryan, they have been on the Use Case podcast. They have. We talked to Darren, uh, and that's actually yeah. published. Uh, we talked to Darren two months ago. Yeah, he did not mention that he was doing a Series A. So this Shame is Cloverleaf. Yeah, that's right. 7.3 Series A extension. So that's a lot of money. And uh, and one of the one of the, the things in the press release, this is on alphamaven.com. Uh, it does all kinds of funding news. And uh, only 5% of employees have access to coaching platforms. So Cloverleaf is an is a coaching platform, a lot of AI. It's very cool. Go and listen to it. Seriously, it's a really good interview. And listen to Darren talk about kind of the bit of Cloverleaf. And uh, again, it's just interesting to see that they raised money. And he never he never mentioned that 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 was even something that they were doing. So he's good for them. He's banned. We're taking his episode down. No, no. 
No love. All right, Swedish startup Buddywise, not Budweiser, Buddywise. They uh, raised uh, 3.5 million euros, and it's a AI power a AI powered workplace safety um, and a platform. So basically, what they're what they're what they're doing is they're helping you with safety and understanding kind of what's going on. So one of the things I love, so go to buddywise.com, but co, C-O. So B-U-D-D-Y-W-I-S-E dot C-O. Anyway, go there, because this is actually really cool. On their website, you're going to see an iceberg. Scroll down on the right-hand side, and you'll see this iceberg. And it, above the waterline of the iceberg is 20 serious incidents per year. And below the waterline is 180,000 unseen, unseen, unsafe situations. <laughs> so, so think okay. like that's an iceberg, right? So, this the tip of the iceberg is above the you know 20, 20 serious incidents per year, and underneath that is a massive amount. So, anything you can do to make that number lower with software or otherwise uh, is 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 huge. I mean, all the any, whatever yeah. you have a safety accident stops productivity, a morale, oh, all the other everything. stuff. It, you lose money. It goes straight to oh. the bottom line. You just lost money. You can't get it back. So anyhow, that's a huge number and it is a great graphic. So check it out. Nice. All right, the last one on funding. Let me double check. So the last one on funding that I thought we, we should talk about is Borderless AI. Came out of stealth. I always love when people come out of stealth. So they come out of stealth, um, and Borderless AI raised seventy uh, $27 million. Came out of a, an, a, and it's an, an, a, an AI-powered employer of record. So the, uh, so think of the things that do uh, M-E-O-R type of related things. So when you read this, this is on HuntScanlon.com. The, pl- the platform automates the complexities of a global HR stack, such as payroll setup, time off requests, employee agreement generation, all kinds of things in onboarding. Like it, the list goes through essentially a lot of HR. And so the, w- the way that I looked at that and the way I read it is, okay, look at your low value task as a, as a human. In, in HR and in recruiting, look at the low value task and get as far away from them as possible. So just just think think strategically. If you're doing something that's low value, stop. Do it, but understand that you're right. That technology is going to take that. So get away from that, that, and also consider where the humanity or where the humanness needs to be, and plant yourself there. Right. In recruiting and in HR, because I mean, twenty seven million dollars. That's that's basically. I'm sure they're calling it a seed A, but they're coming out of stealth. And uh, again, go to you can you can take a look at them. Their website also did a good, good job on the press release, but it's uh, Borderless AI, twenty seven million dollars. All right, that's all I got, man. That's the F's. All right, we're good, and that's the uh, that's did this we barf? episode. We we're done. We did the bar. We barf? We got we got it all. So now you can go finish up your Easter egg hunts and enjoy and. And love your family and eat chocolate and whatever else you're having for dinner. How about it? (laughs) If you're still listening, please subscribe, like us, share with your friends and family and peers and everybody else. If you see us out there, say hello. We'll see you next time. 